Good day everyone, it is Kalaxin here, and if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe, become a patron over on Patreon to support the channel, and follow me over on social media. Today we are going to be talking about the staff of creation theories. People think that it could revive people, and so I want to talk about that. And so the way that I've sort of split this up in my head is like, can the staff do this? Why or why not? Who should be resurrected, if anyone? Who will be? Who wouldn't be? You know, for different reasons. Like, let's say the staff could do this, because I am gonna say why I think that it doesn't. Like, spoiler alert. Like, then we can sort of talk about, like, mm, like who would be revived, what would make sense, all that sort of stuff. And then throughout this video, I am gonna give my own opinion on what the staff uh, can do in those two sections. So to talk about if it can or can't. People's source for this is basically Lindsay making a joke, and I'm not entirely sure where it was, but she was talking with Michael, so I'm guessing it was some sort of, like, Achievement Hunter type situation. Like, I, I don't watch Achievement Hunter. I'm sorry, so I have no idea where she actually said this. I do have a screenshot, though, so you guys can see that for yourselves the post and where it came from and all that, but basically Lindsay is like, hey, like, we have to get the staff, Michael, so we can revive Forrest, and, like, it was a joke, right? But why would Lindsay think that in the first place? That was basically people's argument, right? That she's just joking around, obviously Forrest isn't getting revived, but why does she think that the staff would be able to do that in the first place? Like, it seems like, you know, people were sort of theorizing based on that. But here's why I don't think the staff can do this, okay? I'm pretty sure Lindsay was just joking. I'm sure she doesn't have, like, insider knowledge on the powers of the staff and all that stuff. But... You know, let's just go with it and say, like, why it can't, like, from a canon perspective and sort of ignore what people have said, you know, on Twitter or in other Rooster Teeth videos or stuff like that. Because they probably don't know what the staff can actually do. So let's talk about what I think it can do. Or what I think it can't do. So here's the thing. Here's the tea. Didn't the gods, you know, tell Salem, like, hey, creation doesn't equal resurrection. <laughs> like, we're not really big fans of that. Like, obviously, the, gar the god of darkness, like, he was willing. But the god of light was kind of like, yeah, creation doesn't equal, like, resurrection or recreation or reanimation or whatever you want to call it. Get lost. Like, isn't that what he said? And I know that some people are arguing, well, the gods are hypocrites. Like, they brought back Ozma anyway. Which, like, I guess, but at the same time, like, now that I'm sort of thinking about it, I'm like, why would the gods, the god of light, because I think the god of darkness, like, he, like, peaced the fuck out. Like, I don't think he helped with the relics or anything, because the god of light was the one that was like, hey, Ozma, like, uh, we have a problem, sis. Like, he, like, fucked right off with humanity. He was done. He doesn't want anything to do with it. So I think it was the god of light who made the relics for humanity, because he really still had hope. The god of darkness was just like, right? So here's my thing about that. Why would they give the staff a power that they themselves were against, especially the God of Light was against doing? Why would they give the staff that ability? Now, I can think of one reason, and that's to, like, trick, like, humans and stuff, like, to screw over humans um, that want to use it that way. That's one way. But, like, I'm saying, like, genuine, no-strings-attached reincarnation, right? They're not gonna do that, or at least I don't think so, because that goes against everything the gods were trying to teach Salem in the first place, so why would the staff have that power? Here's the thing. Strings attached? I could see that. And so I was talking about this on Twitter, you know, and we'll get into this when we talk about, like, who would use the staff, who wouldn't use the staff, all that sort of stuff. And so the way that I see it, right, the staff also, this is important, right? The staff is holding up Atlas. So I don't think any of the heroes are so selfish that they would let Atlas fall just to bring back Pyrrha or something like that. I don't think any of them would do that. So we have to keep that in mind as well, is that the heroes would not remove and let Atlas fall. You know what I mean? Even though they have Penny and they could technically access the vault and all that sort of stuff, they wouldn't let Atlas fall just to bring someone back. Atlas would have already had to be fallen and they would already need, like, the staff in their possession. Does that make sense for the heroes to do this in the first place? The villains, on the other hand, this is where I think Neo comes in. Like, if she gets a whiff from Cinder, like, if Cinder's like, you know, it is the staff of creation. 
Like, you could bring Roman back. You know, like, even if it's bullshit, like, that would motivate Neo to go get the staff and kidnap Penny or whatever they're gonna do, I don't know, right? And so, that was sort of my idea, is that a character like Neo would definitely go in there, get the staff of creation, and try to use it to bring back Roman, because she doesn't give a fuck if Atlas falls. That's their whole goal in the first place, is for Atlas to fall. And so that is what I was sort of thinking with that. And that sort of brings us into, like, who would get revived and who wouldn't. And so I definitely think that the Roman thing is a possibility but here's where the strings attached come in the only way I could see the gods putting that as an ability like for the relic is if there were massive like full metal alchemist like a finger curls on the monkey's paw sort of vibes and so if you guys don't know like what the monkey's paw is or what I'm talking about it's basically like you, you know be careful what you wish for because it's not gonna turn out exactly how you thought it was right like she can make something with the staff of creation that looks like Roman and sounds like Roman and seems like it could be Roman but that doesn't mean that it's gonna be Roman you know what I'm saying and so I had these sort of horrific ideas on Twitter about like Roman slowly decomposing or we get like a Coraline situation like you know how the mom basically looks the same except she has button eyes but then as like she slowly gets more deformed and she has long fingernails and things start to get creepy her face gets sunken in that's what I sort of imagine and I sort of imagine a black mirror type situation so if you guys haven't seen this episode don't want to spoil it, but basically the husband dies at the very beginning so that's not a spoiler and the episode is basically about like this lady um, she, I guess, like, uh, contracts, like, a, a company that takes your internet presence and puts it into a robot so you can have, like, your husband back. Like, that's the whole idea, right? And, you know, the sort of theme of that episode is, like, you're not enough of him because, like, what you put, obviously, what you post online isn't exactly, like, who you were offline either, right? And so it's all that, all that sort of stuff. And so I can see that happening with Roman where it looks like Roman, it sounds like Roman, but it, because it's creation and not resurrection it is Neo's idea of Roman and that goes for any other character as well like it's her idea of of Roman and that sort of like like fantasy in her head of what Roman was as opposed to who he really was you know, so I could see that happening and having like horrific consequences, right? And so that is the only way I can see the staff of creation like resurrecting someone. It's like you think that you've resurrected someone, but you haven't. And then it starts to have consequences for you to show you that you can't actually do this. And maybe the staff of creation, um, genie or whatever you want to call it is very like trickstery like that and like ha huh, bitch you thought but no right and so now that we got that out of the way like what I think the staff could actually like do in that regard like it'll be a trick it'll be an illusion like you thought you brought someone back to life but you didn't let's talk about other characters okay like I mentioned, I don't think that any of the heroes are selfish enough to yoink the staff out of Atlas and use it to bring back someone. Unless, and so I have a couple caveats to this. The only, only way I could see this happening is that Atlas has already fallen and their intention is to use the staff on the CCTV tower, right? So they can contact other kingdoms. But first, they will temporarily bring a character back to life. Like, say Summer Rose right? They'll bring back Summer, ask her some questions about Salem, and then they'll be like, well, Mom, it's been real. It's been fun, but it hasn't been real fun. They'll hug it out. You know, they can't, like, have Summer back. They have to think about the good of the world, and then they use the staff on the CCTV tower. Like, a scene like that. Does that make sense where it's like, yeah, love ya, sorry, bye. I still think Summer is alive. That's just an example, right? That's the only, only way I could see this happening for an actual revival, right? Because the stuff I'm talking about with Neo is basically like making a puppet, like she didn't actually revive Roman. But that's the only, only way I could see an actual revival happening, because the staff can only be used on one thing at a time, and that in itself is also a trick, right? Because you can't have, you know, Summer resurrected, and Pyrrha, and Clover, right? You know what I mean, or whatever. Um, and so I feel like that that is definitely an option, if that makes sense. I feel like that is definitely something that could happen where it's like, hey, like, hi mom, like, can we ask you about this before we, you know, use the staff of creation on something else and have to say goodbye? Like, that would be a big oopsis. Um, but other characters, right? Again, I don't think that John would bring back Pyrrha right? Especially if it would be sort of temporary, because I feel like Jean has already accepted that. Maybe that would also fit into his arc to say a final goodbye, but I don't think that he would want Pyrrha back 
permanently. Does that make sense? Because again, like the staff needs to be used for the good of the world. And I feel like that would totally go against John's character, like reviving Pyrrha, because it's like he came to terms with what happened. Like that was his whole thing, like the, his sort of cycle of grief and then seeing the statue, like that was the acceptance. So I don't think that they would do that, especially again, unless, 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 unless the staff could do this, but it was more saying goodbye to Pyrrha. You know, it was more like, like, you know, like, we only have a short amount of time. We can only use the staff on one thing. Like, we need to save the world. I just wanted you to, to know that we were, we were doing it for you, Pira. I don't know. Like, a scene like that, where it's like, yeah, we brought the, back this character for, like, you know, five minutes, but, like, we can't do that permanently, so, oops, right? Because, again, the staff would power that resurrection or that puppet, as we talked about in the case of, like, Neo and stuff. Let's talk about Clover, Okay. Um, do I think that Crow would cause Atlas to fall in order for Clover to be resurrected? No. And so that's the other thing, is like, he wouldn't remove the staff from Atlas because that goes against what Clover wanted. Clover was the protector of Atlas. You know what I'm saying? Like he like loved Atlas. Like he was like, you know, it said something on his like Amity Arena card, like something to that effect. Like he's loyal to the kingdom of Atlas. If Crow took the staff out to bring Clover back, and Atlas fell, that would go against what Clover stood for in the first place. So that to me doesn't make a lot of sense. And that is what Ironwood wants. And he is going against Ironwood. Like he is going to fight Ironwood to the death. I don't know. He's going to fight Ironwood for that reason. And so if removing the staff is what Ironwood wants, Ironwood wants Atlas to fall. I don't know. Now, after Atlas falls, like, say the villains got it and, like, that whole thing that we talked about before, I think they would use it for the CCTV tower, because if Atlas has already fallen, it's not like you can bring it, <laughs> you can put it back up, you know what I mean? Like, they may be too late and they're like, well, I guess our only choice is to do the CCTV now because, like, whoops, right? I still don't think that Crow would use it to bring back Clover, because, again, that's not what Clover wanted, right? I think that what Clover wanted would have been that sort of, like, global unification, if that makes sense, and all that stuff. And here's why, also, from an outside-of-canon perspective, like, I feel like bringing back Clover doesn't align with what Crow is trying to do, especially because the means to bring back Clover would be against what Clover stood for in the first place. Now, from an outside-the-canon perspective, here's where I see this as a problem. It's like, People were already very upset by Clover dying and like, you know, justifiably so and Unicorn of War has talked about that in a video. I think that bringing Clover back to life would be even worse, you know what I mean? Because then you sort of play with people's feelings and you bring them back and it couldn't be permanent because the Staff of Creation can only power one thing at one time, right? And so I feel like, like, it would almost be like the writers are going, well, we made people upset by killing him, so let's bring him back to life and that'll fix everything and it doesn't. So I don't think that they should do that. I would warn them heavily against that. I do not think that it is a good idea. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. I don't think that bringing back Clover is going to solve the problem that people had with sort of that scene and Clover's death and sort of the other things surrounding him in the first place. So I would suggest against it. Like if you feel differently and you know, you're sort of one of the people like in um, in that camp that like were really upset about what happened with Clover and you're still trying to like, you know, sort of, I don't wanna say raise awareness, but like Unicorn of War made a really good like section of his video that really explained the problem. Like if you're still trying to like fight for explaining the problem and that open dialogue with Kruby, like do you think that bringing Clover back would help? Because I really do not. I feel like that would make it 10 times worse. So. That's sort of my opinion on bringing back characters like Clover and Summer and all of that stuff. I think that Summer would make the most sense, but again, like I already said, I don't think the staff could do this. I think the staff, the most that it could do is create sort of a puppet of what you remember that person to be like. And so in the case of Neo, again, it wouldn't be bringing back Roman. It would be bringing back what she remembers of Roman. And that would be the same for Pyrrha or Summer or whoever. Like, it wouldn't actually be them. And so that sort of negates bringing back Summer anyway because, like, I had the idea, like, oh, what if they bring her back to try and ask her questions, right? Like, they can't do that if it's just a puppet. And that's how I feel like it would be. Um, it would just be a puppet of a person. It wouldn't be a real person. And with that theory... I also feel like Neo would go ballistic. Like, if she, like, thought that she brought back Roman, right, but things were happening and it was clear that he wasn't 
proper, if that makes sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't actually himself and all that stuff. I feel like that if he, like, fell apart at the end and the spirit, like, taunted her, like, hey, that's what you get. You can't bring back people from the dead, you know? Right? I feel like she would kill Cinder because Cinder is really the only one that can put that idea in her head, right? And I also wonder what they'll use the last question on, if they'll use it. But I don't know. I guess we'll find out about that. Because now they have the, the lamp. They have the knowledge lamp. And I don't think that all the questions are used. There's still one left. But they don't know Jin's name. So maybe they'll just rub it like good old Aladdin. And like, maybe that'll work. But yeah, so that is my opinion. So in conclusion, can the staff bring people back? I don't think so. Can it make a puppet? Maybe. Right? That's sort of my opinion. Would the characters bring certain characters back anyway? Like, mostly no. Unless it was legit, they would probably try to bring back Summer just to, like, ask her some stuff before they do the CCTV. But, you know, I've already explained. <laughs> I've already explained all that. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you guys think. And, yeah, that is basically it. And I will see you guys later. Okay, bye. <laughs>